Shalom in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are your favorite ex-Muslims spreading Christianity. It's me, Shino, and my wife, Shania. Naomi is here with us, and of course, our brother, Sam Shemun. Welcome all. Welcome back, our lovely Somali Christian TV family. We love you so much, guys, and we hope you had an amazing day today. And you will have, of course, together with us here with our brother, Sam Shemun. Yeah, we're so blessed. Please, if you are new to us, subscribe to our channel and also subscribe to our brother uh, Sam Shemun's channel. Yes. Yeah, welcome all. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, we are having the fourth part of uh, Tawheed. Um, uh, if you haven't watched uh, the uh, three um, uh, sessions before, we advise you to watch them. They will be yeah. very helpful to you and uh, useful to you to follow this uh, fourth part. This part is about uh, Kaaba and uh, uh, the Black Stone. And uh, your mind will blow up when you see how Muslims are, you know, uh, loving and kissing the Black Stone the and, stone. Uh, you know, black the Black, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, I, 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 yeah, I will give uh, the platform to our brother, Sam. Sam, welcome so much to see you. Welcome. I like what you said, your mind will blow up because we're talking about <laughs> Islam. You're thinking of terrorists that blow themselves up, huh? You are <laughs> smart. Yeah. Very smart, man. Very smart. I like how you snuck that in. Your mind yeah. will blow up because we don't blow people up, we blow minds up. Take me! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. anyway, good to see yes. you guys. And yes. uh, see you, brother. I will ask the Lord Jesus bless us in a minute. Yes. But, uh, like I said, as I'm getting older, it takes a while for my throat to warm up. I'm not as young as I used to be. I'm better looking, but not as young as I used to be. And that's why Naomi always puts these pictures that make me look heavier than I am. <laughs> because that spirit of jealousy. Repent, sister. <laughs> but hopefully we'll be having a blessed session. Invite more folks. <clears throat> yes. Ask the Lord Jesus to bring people to learn from the material. In fact, I also want to encourage you. Yesterday they had Jonathan McClatchy on. Jonathan yes. McClatchy is one of our most knowledgeable Christian apologists when it comes to science yeah. and the scientific facts that show that God exists, intelligent design, that the facts of science, not theories, scientific yes. facts show inarguably that the world was created by an intelligent mind and yeah. that intelligent mind is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. So watch that last uh, session yesterday. Rewatch it until you understand and yeah. then share it with others because God <clears throat> has given the world overwhelming scientific, yeah. medical, textual, archaeological, and prophetic proofs. Not only that God exists, but the only God that exists is the God of the Bible, the God revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. And the reason why God has done that, because in his love for his creation, he wants to reveal himself to his creatures and give them overwhelming proof. He is God. They need to turn to him because he created them to find their love and joy in Jesus Christ, leaving them with no excuse to reject the Son of God. So learn these mm -hmm. arguments, understand these arguments, and use them in the power supplied by the Holy Spirit to share because we're called to be the light of the world and the salt yeah. of the earth and to show people the beauty of Jesus Christ by our conduct, by the way we love and worship, the yeah. way we serve. So let's be doers and pray that for myself, not to be a hypocrite, but be mm -hmm. a doer of the will of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Father, <clears throat> and we love you. We love and praise your son, the Lord Jesus. And we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, whom we love, we worship, we cling to. Take over this session, Father, for the glory of Jesus Christ. Yes. Bless Shino, Shania, Naomi, and bless me. Bless our bond, <clears throat> our unity that is produced by your Holy Spirit indwelling us and uniting us to the same head, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Perfect that <clears throat> union that we will love one another for the sake of Jesus and serve one another for the sake of Jesus and that Jesus will increase in us, increase in all who listen, and that we will decrease because it's not about us. It's about the glory of Jesus Christ. Save us from our hypocrisy. Save us from our false motives, our wicked intentions. Sanctify us to do it for the praise of Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask that you strengthen your church. Use us to strengthen the body of Christ of which we are part of by your Holy Spirit. And also to convict Muslims to escape Muhammad and Allah 
and come to the true Jesus of history, the Christ of the New Testament, who is your son, the risen Lord of glory, and make us doers of your will to love you by obeying you and not to be hypocrites. Save us from error and confusion and stammering and illuminate us and our minds and hearts by your Holy Spirit. And again, refresh us, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and give us the health we need. Strengthen my throat with health and vigor to use my voice to glorify Jesus Christ and bless the connection and be with our loved ones. In my case, my daughters, for your glory. We love you, Baba. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't forget last week, <clears throat> we finished off by showing that Muhammad is another ilah, another mm -hmm. God, another yeah. deity alongside of Allah. So then when Muslims tell you they do not worship Muhammad, they're either ignorant that actually they do, or they are redefining worship so that <clears throat> though they worship Muhammad, because they've redefined what really worship is, they don't think they are worshiping Muhammad. So our duty is to show that Satan has inspired Muhammad to make Muhammad an idol in the hearts of Muslims, replacing Jesus with Muhammad so that they are worshiping Muhammad to their destruction. And may Jesus save them from that. Just to give you one example, one more example, because we're going to talk about the black stone, yeah. the idol of Islam and the Kaaba, another idol of Islam, showing yeah. that Islam, when properly understood, when the sources of Islam are correctly interpreted, is anything but monotheism. Yeah. In fact, one of the biggest jokes is that Islam teaches monotheism. The problem is most Christians don't know the true teachings of Islam. Mm -hmm. So they let Muslims get away with deceiving them that they worship God truly and that they are true monotheists and that we Christians supposedly are polytheists because we worship yeah. multiple gods. Yeah. But let me now show you again another example how Muhammad has been <clears throat> erected by Satan to be another God alongside of Allah in order to rob Muslims, <clears throat> to take them away from Jesus Christ as their only hope of salvation because now they have Muhammad. Why do they need Jesus? Hmm. This comes from the exposition, and I gave you the link here. Let me get you the link. I posted it in the comment section, but I'll post it right here. They post one of the articles. I posted three links to three different articles that will be relevant to this section, and I'll give you two more, Lord willing, shortly. But in the citation I'm going to give you is from this article. Yeah. I put in the private chat. Yeah. Let me share it again in the comment section. This is part one of a series I wrote, Khairun Mushrikeen. Khairun Mushrikeen. Allah as the best mushrik of them all, part one. Mm -hmm. I titled the article... It's actually multi multiple parts. Khairul, Khairul means the best, and Mushrikeen, the best of all those who commit shirk. Now, for those of you who don't know, shirk sounds like shirt, but it's shirk, S H R I K, is the one sin that the Quran says Allah will never forgive. So, what yeah. is that? Shirk is when you take creatures as gods besides Allah or alongside of Allah. Or you ascribe some of the divine characteristics of Allah to a creature. That's shirk. So if I say Muhammad is all-knowing, that's shirk. Because I ascribe to Muhammad the attribute of omniscience. An attribute that only belongs to God. If I say that of any creature or if I pray to someone besides Allah, that is shirk according to the Quran. Right now. Yeah. Even with that said, if you've been following along the previous sessions, Allah made Muhammad his partner, meaning Allah is the one who committed shirk because he made Muhammad his partner. He made him an ilah, a god, alongside of him because without Muhammad, you can't be saved. And when Muhammad speaks, Allah speaks. And what Allah sees, Muhammad sees, thereby making Muhammad his partner in his glory, worship, and characteristics. So Allah commits shirk. That means if Allah is consistent, Allah has to throw himself in hell. Because if you read for me, Naomi, chapter 4, verse 48 of the Quran. Chapter 4, Surah Al-Nisa, 448. Read that for us. 448. Okay. Yes. Um, which version do you, do you have a preference? The not inspired version. Because none of them are inspired. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> 
Arbery. Usually, the most accurate translation usually is A. J. Arbery, Arthur J. Arbery. Arbery. Yeah, Arbery. yeah. The ones that are the most unreliable are the ones done by Muslims. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. I just want the non-Muslims to know. Typically, the Muslim translation of the Quran are dishonest and they are unreliable because they're embarrassed by the fact that what the Arabic says and they want to deceive non-Arabic speaking people from what the Quran actually says in Arabic. And it's yeah. ironic because they do to the Quran what the Quran accuses Jews and Christians of doing to the Bible. And I'll explain that in a minute. Exactly. So if yeah. you want an accurate translation, try to stay away from Muslim translations. Yeah. The most accurate ones are done by those who are not Muslims or scholars like Arthur J. Arbery. But I also highly recommend, and Lord willing, you're going to bring him on soon because yeah. I gave you his number. Usama Dakdok, he yes. produced an English translation of the Quran, and Phil Horai, I just mentioned it. See, he was thinking like me. He yeah. wrote a Quran called The Generous Quran. Yeah. yeah. He got tired, he got sick and tired of what he was reading in the English translations because his mother tongue is Arabic. He knows yeah, Arabic better yeah. than calling his messenger. Yeah. yeah. Did you know that? That Usama Dakdok knows Arabic better than Allah and his messenger. <laughs> I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, actually. Any yeah. non-Muslim who knows Arabic will tell you there are gross grammatical mistakes in the Quran. Mm. There's a list of them. And if you want to ask Usama, say, Sama, can you do a session? showing the grammatical errors of the Quran, showing that Allah doesn't know Arabic any better than Muhammad. Yeah. yeah. True. Stephen Chloe Wackett, I call her, it's Chloe Wake because she's a woken, not as a wokener. Uh, yeah. She goes very much. Those who know Arabic are not Muslims will admit to you yeah. there are many grammatical mistakes in the Arabic Quran, even though it's supposed to be the speech of Allah, which means that Allah doesn't speak... <clears throat> perfect Arabic. His Arabic is no better than Muhammad because Muhammad is Allah, Allah is Muhammad. Now that said, yeah. mm. chapter yeah. 4, verse 48. Yeah. Um, God forgives not that ought should be associ him associated. Less than that he forgives to whomsoever he will. Whoso associates with God anything has indeed forged a mighty sin. So did you catch God or Allah will not do what? He will not forgive yes, if you. Yeah. It's the yeah. first part because even Naomi got discombobulated. She know what? what is sorry, I just, had, I just had a um, paper handy too. Sorry. Yeah, God forgives not that ought should be with him associated. So what it means is God will not forgive if you associate any creature alongside of him. Yeah. But Allah or God, and it's Arabic God, but uh, Allah, but Arbery decided to translate it God because his audience weren't Muslims. And he knew if he kept saying Allah, the non-Muslims would get confused. They think it's a foreign deity, even though it is. Yeah. So Allah will not forgive that you associate with him. Yeah. He may forgive any other sins, but when you associate with him, he will not forgive you. Forgive. Yeah. He will not forgive. This is the sin of shirk. The word associate is the word shirk. Mm -hmm. And yet Allah commits shirk all throughout the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah commits shirk. That's why in my article I titled it, Khairul Mushrikeen. Among yeah. all the mushrik, the mushrikeen, those who commit shirk, Allah is the best of them because no one commits shirk better than Allah. Wow. No, it's true. I, and I've proven it from the Islamic yeah. sources. Now, yeah. Now, yeah. now uh, let me show you an example again about Muhammad. Okay. Yeah. Let me just go oh, one second. Let me get there. Okay. Let me just show you here. I'm going to read it from my article for the sake of time. Then we're going to go to the black stone. And okay. I'm going to go into the Kaaba. But I just want to wrap it up that Muhammad is another God besides Allah. He is Allah's partner without whom no one can be saved. Mm. This is why in Muslim countries, ironically, if you've been raised in Muslim countries, you may even insult Allah and not believe in Allah and you won't get killed. You insult yeah. Muhammad and they'll kill you. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Exactly. Uh, we uh, we agree with you. Yeah, yeah. and th that's exactly. what we experience in our country. Yeah, yeah. people can blaspheme; they can uh, say bad words to Allah, but when it comes to Muhammad, they must be killed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's what does that sure. tell you? Who do they really worship and honor and love? Allah of or course, Muhammad? That, that's Muhammad, 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 of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And then what you'll find sometimes written on, let's say, in mosques, you'll find the name "There is no God but Allah," and right 
on the same height and Muhammad is his messenger. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. No, uh, some, have... some not only uh, in the mosque, in the uh, houses. houses as well. Yeah. On yeah. the, the same level, right? On the same level, yeah. yeah. You cannot have only, sometimes Muhammad is higher. You know, you can <laughs> go in there, yeah. So it, it is, uh, it's it is very true. Sheena and I, we used to have a decoration on our living room. Yeah, both Allah of Allah and Muhammad, yeah. next to side by side. Uh, if yeah. I remember now, I say, what was that? But, <laughs> yeah, on that time, I didn't know. I was just in, worshiping Muhammad. In your ignorance, you didn't know you were worshiping Muhammad and you placed yeah. him on the level of Allah because yeah. you were deceived. Now yes. the Holy Spirit has given you the light of revelation. Your eyes Amen. are open yeah. and your minds are open, hearts are open. Now you see you were worshippers of this Antichrist, Muhammad, and Jesus yeah. saved you. Praise the Lord yes. Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right. Yeah. Save so us. let me read this and I'm going to read to you a commentary by Ibn Kathir as well as Kadi Iyad. This is chapter 2, verses 35 to 37 of the Quran. I'll read it. Surah Al-Baqarah 2, 35, 37, picks yeah. up. And we said, O oh Adam, dwell thou and thy wife in the garden and eat ye freely of the fruits thereof where ye will. Eat any fruit you want, but come not nigh this tree. Don't come near this tree, lest ye become wrongdoers. But Satan caused them to deflect therefrom and expel them from the happy state in which they were. And we said, fall down, one of you a foe unto the other. Fall down from here. There shall be for you on earth a habitation and provision for a time. Now watch this part. This is verse 37. Yeah. Then Adam received from his Lord words of revelation. So Allah inspired Adam to repeat certain words in prayer of repentance. And he, Allah, relented to, toward him. Lo, he, Allah, is relenting the merciful. So Allah inspired Adam what to pray to ask Allah to forgive him. When he prayed those words, Allah turned to Adam and forgave him. Now, what were the words? Now, unfortunately, the Daru Salam, the Daru Salam translation of Ibn Kathir, because there are several English translations of Ibn Kathir. The most popular one is Daru Salam. It's an abridged translation. They didn't translate all of Ibn Kathir. They translated select parts of Ibn Kathir and left untranslated some of Ibn Kathir's statement that they were embarrassed by or they did not accept because Daru Salam publishers and distributors, they're Salafi. Now, I'm trying to educate my Christian brothers and sisters yeah. about this particular sect. The Salafi branch of Islam is the Islam of Boko Haram. It's right. the Islam of ICE. It's the Islam of Al-Qaeda. It's the Islam of Osama bin Laden. Al-Shabaab. We have Al -Shabaab. Somali Al-Shabaab. Yeah. Al yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. This is their Islam. Yeah. This is, these are the terrorists, mm -hmm. the murderers who perfectly exemplify the spirit of Muhammad and the first generation of Muslims. Yep, yep. Even Uthman, that Slav Farouk, he's a Salafi. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips, he's a Salafi. Yasser Qadi used to be a Salafi. And because he's now turned from his very strict Salafi ways, he's actually disliked and hated by Salafis. And wow. he was even threatened by one of the terrorist groups in their magazine. Mm. They singled wow. him out for, for murder. They, he's actually a target, Yasser Qadi. He's, oh, he's wow. targeted by these extreme Salafi groups, they want him dead. Wow. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Because he exposed the, the, the narrative, the whole in the narrative. Yes, oh. he, <laughs> because he's, he's questioning yeah. Salafi Islam and he's saying it's not the purest form of Islam and yeah. because he has ties with Muslim Brotherhood because a lot of people don't know these organizations and Muslim Brotherhood are in competition. Yeah. Right. Right. So he's targeted. But with that said, may God spare Yasser Qadi's life by bringing him to the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not the Lord's will be done. Now, with that said, yeah. Daru Salam, because they're Salafi, Salafis reject something called uh, Tawassul. Tawassul. Now, I'm not trying to get fancy and sound intelligent. These are their terms. Tawassul refers to intercession, seeking yeah. wasila, intercession, connection with Allah. Mm -hmm. Most Sunni Muslims and the Shia, they embrace this doctrine Muslim. called Tawassul, which is yeah. invoking dead Muslims, invoking Muhammad or his companions or even angels to pray for you and to ask Allah to pray for you. In other words, it's Islam stealing one of the doctrines of the ancient church. Mm -hmm. The ancient church 
universally believed in something called the communion of saints, where those who are true believers in Jesus Christ, who lived holy lives and died as martyrs, and some of them didn't even die as martyrs, but they were holy servants of Jesus Christ, are now alive in the presence of Jesus, perfected, glorified, and by the grace of God's Spirit, the Spirit makes known to them their brothers and sisters on earth are asking them to pray to Jesus for them. Many Protestants reject this doctrine. So I'm not here to say, believe it or not. I'm just letting you know, though many Protestants reject it, historically, this was the belief of the church universally, which is why today, Catholics, Orthodox, Coptic, Syrian churches, they all accept the communion of saints. Well, remember, when Muhammad started preaching Islam, he wasn't exposed to Protestants. Mm. I want you to remember the historical context of Muhammad. Yeah. There were no Protestants in the 7th century and 600s where Muhammad reportedly lived. So who is he interacting with? He's interacting with Christians like the Coptics, like mm -hmm. the Assyrian Church of the East, yeah. like the Orthodox and the Roman Catholic. This is why in Islam you find a lot of their beliefs as part of Islam. For example, Islam teaches Mary is a perpetual virgin. One of her names in Islam is Al-Batul, the virgin. No. She never got married. She never had children. She remained a virgin until Allah took her. Well, why do you think Muhammad believed that? Because the Christians he was interacting with believed that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Muhammad even taught that Mary was immaculately conceived, that when Allah created her, and we can talk about this as part of uh, violation of Tawheed, that yeah. Muhammad turned Mary into a goddess. And I'll show you that if, in this session, God willing. Yeah. He believed that Mary was immaculately conceived, chapter 3, verse 42. Allah yeah. purified Mary, and then the commentators say, Allah created Mary free of all impurities, all lusts, all sin. Well, where do you think he got that from? That's what the Christians at that time believed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. you have to understand Islam in its historical context. The kind of Christianity that Islam was exposed to is not Protestantism. There were no mm -hmm. Protestants. They only came. I'm not attacking Protestants. I'm just stating this as a fact. Yeah. So at the time of Muhammad, Christians, especially the Christians of the East, would face the sun, the rising of the sun, several times a day and pray. So they had a Qibla. They had a prayer direction. Yeah. The Jews would face Jerusalem. So then when the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah talks about Christians and Jews like Muslims having a Qibla, meaning the direction of prayer, that's true because they all at that time had a direction that they would look to when they pray. Christians towards the east, the rising of the sun. Yeah. Why the rising of the sun? Because one of the names given to Jesus in the Bible is that he's the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness. So like the sun rises from the east, so too Jesus, our sun, has risen. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So looking to the sun was a symbolic act that you are actually facing your son of righteousness, S-U-N, who's now been raised with healing in his wings. What am I talking about? Yeah. Go to Malachi 4, verse 2. So sister, and read that for us. I hope I'm not boring you with this information. No, no it's not. amazing. It's no, 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 not at all. Malachi, yeah. 4, 4. Malachi 4, verse 2. This is a prophecy of Messiah yeah. that yes. Christians apply to our Lord Jesus Christ because if you look what Malachi 4, verse 2 says, yeah. notice who will arise yes, on yes. us to shine on us with healing. In his wings. But to you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you now, shall go out. Are you moving on, so, sister? Sun, yes. when you say it, people don't know if you're saying S O N sun, sun. or S U N sun. S U N sun of righteousness. So what will rise upon God's people? The sun of righteousness shall arise. Yeah. With what? Keep right now, finish it. With healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stole fed calves. There you go, attacking me for being fat again. <laughs> <laughs> it's here, it's in the verse. It's not me. Oh, so you see, that is not yeah. bad, see? It's no. <laughs> and here you are. In fact, what I'll do for you is I'll give you the English Standard Version. You can show it on the screen so people can see. Because sure. the New Testament applies this to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can just show it for a second. So. Sure. Christians identify Jesus as the sun. And where does the sun rise? From the east. And it sets oh, in the west, right? Mm -hmm. So they would face the east, the rising of the sun, as a symbolic act that they are facing the Lord Jesus, who is our son, that yeah. has risen with healing in his wings. He has healed us. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The Jews would face Jerusalem. In fact, those of you who know Islam, 
When Muhammad claimed to be a prophet, what was his Qibla, his prayer direction, according to the Islamic tradition? Was it the Kaaba or Jerusalem? Jerusalem. 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 Yeah. He would yeah. face Jerusalem while in Mecca, and he kept facing Jerusalem, even when into Medina, for at least 18 months. It was yeah. only about 18 months later in Medina, he changed his direction towards the Kaaba because the Jews started mocking him and rejecting him. And when he saw the Jews were rejecting him, guess what he did? Then the hell with you and your Qibla, we're going to face the Kaaba. Yeah. Yeah, because of Omar as well. That's the advice. Yeah. From Omar. advice. <laughs> yeah, but you, caught what, you caught the point yeah. that Islam, its context is these traditions. Traditions, yes. yeah. yeah. It wasn't born during Protestantism. It was born during a period where the Christians believed in Mary's perpetual virginity, where they believed in intercession of the saints, where they believed in Mary's essential purity, and they even believed Mary was assumed into the presence of her son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who honored her yeah. by taking her into his presence, which is even in the Quran in 23 verse 50. We can do a session on that. Yeah. So it's not surprising that Islam also developed their own doctrine of communion and the saints. Yeah, This is called the wassul. Yeah. So what is the doctrine of the belief? I can ask Muhammad to pray for me. I, mm -hmm. I can ask Ali ibn Abu Talib to pray for me or Jibreel to pray for me. Now the Salafi Muslims say, no, this is shirk. Yeah. yeah. This is shirk. Yeah. You can't do that. So because Salafi Islam rejects this and they reject deifying Muhammad or going to Muhammad and contacting him because he's dead now in Barzakh, yeah. They omitted a lot of traditions in their translation of Ibn Kathir, such as the following. I didn't make it, I didn't mean to make it long. This tradition is in Ibn Kathir, but in the Daru Salam edition, they didn't translate it. They left it, uh, le they left it out. Mm -hmm. But the one I'm reading is from a different English translation of Tafsir Ibn Kathir. It's by Sheikh Nasib Rafai, and the publishing company is El Furdos Limited. From London, and it's the second edition, 1998. It's in that article, page 107, footnote 10. Now watch what words Allah inspired Adam to say to be forgiven and get blown away. And then we're going to talk about the black stone. Yeah. al -Bayhaqi. Those of you who don't know who al bayhaqi is, he's one of the greatest Muslim Hadith scholars who actually wrote a book. It's called uh, Dalil, Dalil and Nubuwa. Dalil and Nubuwa, the proofs of prophethood. Yeah, in this yeah. book, he gave all the proofs showing that Muhammad is a prophet. So al Bayhaqi yeah. cited the following hadith in his book, uh, Dalil and Nubuwa, Signs, Proofs of Prophethood. This is a hadith from this renowned Muslim scholar of hadith. Narrated Omar ibn al-Khattab. The prophet said, when Adam committed the sin, he said to Allah, Oh my Lord. Now notice what the words are. This is mm -hmm. a comment 237. Guys, get ready. Tell me what mm -hmm. this yeah. Adam says, oh, my Lord, I ask you with reference to Muhammad to forgive me. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. Allah said, oh, Adam, how did you know about Muhammad? For I've not yet created him. Yes. Adam replied, oh, my Lord, when you created me, I looked up and saw inscribed on the legs of the throne the words, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. I know that you do not attach to your name, but the name of the dearest of your creation. Wow. You catch it? Here. Let me let me yeah, post it. Yeah. Yeah. So Adam asked Allah to forgive him for the sake of Muhammad. Can you post that so they can see it? Yeah, I'm not lying. Yeah. Muhammad is Allah. You got it? So yeah. on the throne, Allah has written, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasul Shaitan. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite large though. It covers. Oh, it's large. Yeah, it covers up. Oh no, that's better. Yeah, it's that changed it now. Better, yeah. Okay, now who who caught what I just said? La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasul Shaitan. Rasul <laughs> Shaitan. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Right there. Yeah. Now let me read the second part of it, so you can mm. just see it. So I'm not making it up. Allah said to Adam, "You have spoken rightly, Adam." Now watch what Allah says. Muhammad is the dearest of my creation. I have forgiven you because you asked by Muhammad, and had it not been for him, I would not have created you. Whoa. Wow. Now let me show you this. Oh, no. so because of Muhammad, Adam was created. 
Had it not been for uh, uh, Muhammad, wow. I would not have created you. Yeah. What? So here's the second one. Yeah, yeah. There is a second That's part. So bad, yeah. yeah. It's a commentary. Now you see how Satan inspired Muhammad to replace Jesus because our Bible says all creation was created for Jesus. Right. And yeah. Jesus is the Father's beloved heart, the Son whom he loves. Yeah. What did Islam do? Make Muhammad Allah's beloved yeah. and the reason why Allah created the world. Right, yeah, wow. yeah. Plagiarism. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. so you see? So mm -hmm. now let me read what they say about this hadith. This hadith was narrated by Al-Hakim or Hakim, who also cl classified as Sahih. So this scholar said it's Sahih authentic. Others said no. Among the transmitters of this hadith is Abdurrahman ibn Zayed bin Aslam. Al-Haythami said this hadith was rep reported by Al-Dabarani. Al-Dabarani and a chain of transmitters are people I do not know. Well, you don't know, doesn't mean they're unreliable. But Al-Hakim was therefore mistaken yes. in classifying this hadith as Sahih because he himself criticized Abdurrahman ibn Zayd ibn Aslam in his book at Duafa, meaning hadiths that are da'if. But don't forget, according to Muslim scholars, da'if means it passed. Yeah. Da'if means it's a hadith that is reliable enough you can't reject it. Da'if means weak, but it passed. Yeah, right. So even though one scholar said Sahih, the other said Da'if, it still means it passed. Yeah. So how can we state the authenticity of the Hadith after he had criticized him? Now, it's not just Ibn Kathir who cites this. Another renowned Muslim authority, Kadi Iyad Musa al-Yahsubi, in his book, Ash-Shifa of Kadi Iyad, Muhammad Messenger of Allah, translated by Aisha Abdurrahman Buli. She translated it. This is the third reprint, paperback, 1991 edition. This is page 89, page 89. Look what he cites. Same hadith. Another, another variant has Adam said, this should be, has Adam say, uh, say, but anyway, it's a typo. When you created me, I lifted my gaze to your throne and written on it was, and my, Adam is seeing what's written on the throne. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So I knew there would be no one held in greater esteem by you than the one whose name you place alongside your own name. Wow. Allah then wow. revealed to him. Allah then revealed to him. By my might, Quwa, wow. and wow. majesty, he is the last of the prophets among your descendants. If it had not been for him, I would have not created you. Wow. Let me wow. give you that. So you can see it. Unbelievable. I went to the black stone, but here. <laughs> Yeah, so shit. No, Islam is Tawheed, sister. Ya <laughs> kafira. <laughs> it's Tawheed. Yeah. Ahad. Ahad. This is Ahad. Ahad. Okay, can you pass it? <laughs> now let me read the rest of it. It is said that Adam was given the kunya. Look what Adam's kunya was. Abu hmm. Muhammad, father of Muhammad. Oh. Wow. wow. Some people say that it was Abu al-Bashar, the father of mankind. There you go, Kadiyat. So there you go. So you guys know I'm not making it up. There it is. It's in that article. Take all my materials, guys. This is what yes. I want you to do. Learn yes. the arguments correctly. Yeah. Understand what we say correctly. Yeah. Understand what you read correctly so you don't misunderstand and then mislead people by misinforming them. Ask the Spirit to help you understand. Yeah. Remember these facts. Take my material. Start teaching people. Start translating them. Start creating web websites or YouTube sessions yep. spread yep. this information we wrote spread, this for spread. you guys so you can use it for the lord jesus come on do what somebody yes. is doing yes do what Amen. wake is doing do yes, what do Adam Seeker, hussein meshni they're all yes. starting channels presenting these facts to reach yep. more people for the glory yes. of jesus. we're doing this yeah, yeah. yeah. praise god yeah. thank so you brother. Read what allah said again so we can go into the black stone yep. allah then revealed to him she posted it for you yes. by my might and majesty he is the last of the prophets among your descendants. If it had not been for him, wallahi, I would have not created you. Take me! Yeah. Now here's the real question. It says, Adam saw on the legs of the throne the words, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Yeah. I want to know what language was it written in? Yeah. Arabic? Arabic. Allah is speaking Arabic. Allah is speaking Arabic. That Allah was speaking Arabic and writing Arabic before the creation of Arabs and the Arabic language? 
Yeah, that's uh, of course. If everything being made because of Muhammad, See? has to be prepared the language Arabic. It has to be Arabic. Because <laughs> Muhammad cannot <laughs> speak other languages, only Arabic. Yeah. Wallahi, uh, brother. Wallahi, sister. You are right. You're not far from Jannah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now that we show Islam does worship Muhammad, and notice Muhammad, yeah. he's the beloved of Allah, Habib yeah. Allah. Yeah. Notice he's the reason why Allah created the world, created Adam. Yeah. Now let me show you how this is Satan's way of robbing Jesus our Lord of his glory and giving it to a son of the devil to mislead people from looking to Jesus because they have Muhammad. So why do I yeah. need Jesus when I have Muhammad? You see what Satan did? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now let me show you what the Bible says who our Lord Jesus is. Yeah. If you can, sister, read Mark 111 and Mark 9 7. Go to Mark 111 and Mark yeah. 9 7. We'll just look at three. Nine, I need a good chiropractic. My neck is sore. My goodness. Woo! <laughs> okay. When you have a good head like me, it hurts your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Wallahi, sister, my head is the shape of the earth. <laughs> The earth is like egg step, like my head. Wallahi, wallahi. wallahi. Your head is good. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking good, brother. Yeah. In Jesus' yes. name, keep praying. I get healthier yes. and holier and yes. more in love with Jesus and shining. I'm also good. getting younger, younger. Don't say you're getting older. Say Thank you're you, getting sister. younger. I am so yes. young, I feel like I'm 15. Yes. <laughs> the Lord will renew your youth like an eagle. That's Hallelujah. what I said. Amen. 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 That's Isaiah 40, verses 30 and 31. Lord bless yeah. you. Amen. 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 You know, she, you know, her reward is great in the kingdom. God bless you with a Proverbs 31 wife. And the fact that she married you to carry this tribulation by marrying someone like you, great is the reward the kingdom system. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you so much. Should I thank this guy or he just insulted me? What is it? He's <laughs> confused now. Yeah. He doesn't know what to say. Yeah, he doesn't, wait, okay. Should okay. I say thanks? What he's saying? Marrying me is a great trial. You are great, <laughs> brother. She is blessed. She is blessed. and you know, big in heaven. Yeah, I'm blessed. <laughs> because we are one. Amen. Yeah. She yeah, was blessed. Your she head is shaped like your too. You have egg shape. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. What did Mark one eleven say? One eleven. Then a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And yet Muhammad said he is the beloved of Allah. Wow. Yeah. And wow. yet the true God says Jesus is my beloved, my love, my heart. Now Mark nine seven. And a cloud came and overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Okay, so who is God's beloved, his Habib, the one whom he loves and adores? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah. Mm. And he's his son whom he loves. And then what does God say? Listen yeah. to Muhammad or listen to my son? Listen, listen to my to son. My son. Of Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Go, amen. Now the final one, Colossians, Colossians 1, chapter 1, 13 to 18. And that's it. And then we're going to go into the black stone. Wallahi, brother. Wallahi. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, she goes to Colossians 1, 13, 18. You guys may think I'm making fun of Arabic. I actually love the Arabic language. It's very beautiful, yeah. very expressive. It's powerful, like Hebrew and Aramaic. The problem is yeah. the Muslims stole Arabic. Yeah. But one thing I want you to remember, yeah. if you believe the Bible, Jesus yeah. created all human languages Amen. So that all human beings of all nationalities worship Jesus in all human languages. So Jesus created Arabic for his glory. So people will worship and glorify him in Arabic. Mm. Arabic wasn't for Allah and Muhammad. Arabic is for Jesus Christ. So we need to reclaim it for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen brother. And about the, and you said about the Wallahi, you know, the Somali young people, you, especially the youth, uh, they always say, they call themselves, say Wallahi. Yeah, we'll so talking. say wallahi, say wallahi. Everything you do, you have to say wallahi. Even Otherwise, when people say that now in London. They are not going to believe in you. They're not exactly. going to believe in you. So the youth, uh, yeah, their nickname it is not wallahi, but say wallahi. Say wallahi. English and so, uh, Arabic yeah. together. Because yeah, it means by Allah, brother, by Allah, wallahi, I will kiss your egg shape. <laughs> wallahi. wallahi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to believe otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey. I'm ready. Yeah. Well, since 1, 13, 18, notice why the creation was made. Notice what it says. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Who is the son of his love? 
Jesus. Jesus Christ. So notice, so. Jesus is the son whom he loves, of his mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. his very heart and love. Who? Jesus, the son, not Muhammad. And so no. why were we created? Keep reading. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invis invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Who, who used, wh whom did God the Father use to create everything in heaven and earth? Whom the Father used? The Jesus. Son. Jesus Christ. The Son. So by Jesus, all yeah. things were created in heaven and earth. That means Jesus created Muhammad, mm. Muhammad's family. He created all Muslims. He yes. created all languages. Amen. He created everything in heaven and earth. Who? Jesus, the Father. Jesus. The Father. Keep reading. Yeah. Hallelujah. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And now, you know what that means, right? Before you go on. Sorry. He, Jesus, is eternal and timeless because he is before all creation. He was yeah. there when there was no creation, mm -hmm. and he's supreme over creation. And it says, in him, meaning yeah. in relationship to him. In union with him, yeah. the power that requires to sustain all creation alive comes out of him, from him. He sustains and preserves all creation alive. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, and that show is that show was go ahead. Yeah, that show is his deity as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Notice the last part of 16. All things were created through him and for, for him. him. Yeah. Yeah. So He's according to God's true word. Everything was created for Jesus. Muhammad was created for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Muslims yeah. were created for Jesus. Adam was created for Jesus, not for the sake of Muhammad. Now finish it, verse 18. Mm. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the pre preeminence. So Jesus is the God who created heaven and earth, and created everything in heaven and earth who sustains and preserves the whole creation alive by his almighty power and you with the father and the holy spirit because the father with the spirit created all things by the son for the son because the father wants all creation to know the son is the head of creation yeah. superior supreme sovereign over all creation yeah. yeah amen amen and that's what the father wants the world to know so now here you have muhammad saying Allah created the world, created Adam for my sake because I am the beloved of Allah. Convince me Muhammad is not a tool of the devil, inspired by Satan to replace Jesus in the hearts of Muslims. Exactly. So there you go. We got that yeah. part, right? Yeah. Now yeah. uh, let's talk about the Kaaba and contrast it to the temple of God. Because Muslims, when they pray five times a day, have to face the Kaaba in Mecca. Now, the question is, why do they face the Kaaba? Now, when Muslims are asked this question, they come back and say, but hold on. Throughout, throughout the Old Testament, even during the time of Jesus, the Jews would face the temple in Jerusalem and pray. So does that mean they were committing idolatry? Now, let me explain the difference between the Jews facing the temple in Jerusalem when they pray to God and the Muslims facing the Kaaba. Let me yeah. show you what the difference is. Go to 1 Kings chapter 8, read 10 to 13. 1 Kings chapter 8, 10 to 13. Let's now explain the difference. Okay. Uh, 8, 10 to 13. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon spoke. The Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud. I have surely built you an exalted house and a place for you to dwell in forever. So the house in Jerusalem was the place where God said, I will live in this house. I will situate my presence in a real dynamic manner. So that I will really, truly be present in this house while at the same time I'm present on my throne in heaven. Mm. So according to the Old Testament, God accepted the temple as the place on earth where he would live in a real, unique manner 
where he would situate his presence in a real manner so that the Jews would have no doubt God is really in this place, even though he's still on the throne in heaven in visible glory. And what sign did he give that he's really in this house? Yeah. The cloud. The cloud. The cloud yeah. God appeared in the pillar of cloud. And they saw the pillar of cloud filling the temple as a sign to Solomon and everyone else. This is now my house. This is where I live on earth, even though I fill heaven and earth. Even though I oversee all creation, even though I'm on my throne in a visible shape, where I appear visibly on a visible throne, I'm also here. My presence is really in this house. So yeah. I have no doubt when you come here, you're coming to me. I'm in this house. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You see that, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the same pillar of cloud that appeared to Moses and the Israelites and to the Egyptians that assumed that looked like a pillar of fire by night. Yeah. I don't need to show you that, right? But you remember that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, we can look at it, but I think people know. Yeah, that's an Exodus. Okay, now that said, go to Second Chronicles chapter 6, verses 1 or 2. Chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. Yep. Then Solomon spoke. The Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud. I have surely built to you an exalted house and a place for you to dwell in forever. So this house is where you're going to dwell in forever, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, let me show you the sign that God gave, again, that this house I accept as my dwelling on earth. I will then situate my presence here so that I'll be really, truly here in a real, miraculous manner while still on heaven's throne in a visible shape where the angels will see me visibly. So I'll be on the throne and here. So have no doubt, I'm here. Though you may not see me visibly, I'm going to appear visibly this one time to assure you I'm here. This is my home. So be careful of how you approach me in my house and what you do in my house. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go to Second Chronicles 7. Open up the entire chapter. I'm going to show you something. Open up the entire chapter. When you open up, let me know. I'm there. I've got it. Okay. Second Chronicles 7. Read verses 1 to 3. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house, the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. So notice why they bowed down. They weren't bowed down to the temple. They yeah. bowed down because God appeared in visible glory by appearing in the pillar of cloud. That was the glory that he appeared at, appeared with. His visible glory is him appearing in a cloud. And then fire coming out of the cloud and consuming the sacrifices before their eyes. Mm. Yeah. So what happened? God's glory appeared. What was his glory? Yeah. That pillar of cloud that they saw visibly, a pillar of cloud, as a sign, God is now here. He's showing himself visibly, so we have no doubt he's now here. And then fire came out of the cloud, and all the sacrifices, he, he yeah, consumed, consumed meaning I accept the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why did they bow down then? Why did they bow down? They bow God. down because God, yeah, is there. God, God is there. We yeah. bow down yes, because of the temple. No, 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 no because no. the presence no. of the of God, yeah, the yeah. glory. Of the Lord. Notice, yeah, they didn't bow down until God's presence showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. True. So why would the Jews face the temple and pray or bow down? Because God gave them a sign where they saw yeah. God's glory visibly in the shape of a cloud and fire. Actual fire coming out of the cloud, consuming sacrifices as a sign. I live here. Yeah. Have no doubt. When you face this temple, you're facing me. And yeah. when you approach this house, you're approaching me. When you enter the house, you're entering my presence. That's why they bowed. Yeah. 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 Now exactly. read the same chapter, Second Chronicles 7, read 12 to 14. 12 to 14. Okay. Watch here, because I'm going to show you the difference between the temple and the Kaaba. Yeah. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. So God said, I accept this house. Mm, yeah. I accept this house. Yeah. And it will be a house where you offer sacrifices to me. 
to yeah. appease yeah. me of my wrath so you can be forgiven of your sins. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence amongst my among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. See, this is where we get that verse from. There's a song. It's I can't sing, Naomi, so don't come to me. It's <laughs> I hear that song where it says, If my people who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray. Ever heard that song? Yeah. I haven't personally, but uh, <laughs> yeah. there's a song, right? I, I, yeah. worship growing up hearing worship. This was a song they sang. It was yeah. based on verse 14. Yeah. yeah. This is the verse where it says, If my people are called by my name, who are identified yeah. with me, should yeah. humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. There's, they even made a song out of this verse. Yeah, yeah. Verse 14, you get it, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, now, what did God say? Solomon, I hear your prayer. I accept this house. It is my house. I'll accept sacrifices to be made so that I can be appeased and forgive you of your sins when you then turn and ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So God yeah. is there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even though he's still on heaven's throne visibly, right? Yes, yes. Sure. Now let me give you a few more examples because I got to make a case, and I'll give you the articles I wrote there because Muslims try to turn this against us. Well, the Jews face the temple. Are they committing adultery? Take beer. We got you, brother. Allah <laughs> <laughs> Go to Exodus 33, read 7 to 11. Exodus 33, verses 7 to 11. You know, by the way, I don't know if you're in your part of the world, 7 11. Have you heard of 7 11? Yes, but we don't have any here in the UK. But we. How do you know about it then, Naomi? I've been to Thailand before, so I've seen it in Thailand. They have 7 Eleven in Thailand? Yeah, they do, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I've ever been to one. So, But it's just yeah, like a convenience Eleven. shop, isn't it? It's not exactly. a convenience store. It, it's famous all over America. 7 Eleven. So yeah. when I think 7 Eleven, I think of Amer uh, you know, 7 Eleven <laughs> store because they got the best coffee in the house. And you know what's beautiful about it? Every seventh cup of coffee is free. Yeah, baby, I can. <laughs> Take beer, brother. Uh, <laughs> coffee, free coffee. <laughs> she will love that. Yeah, you would love that. Mm. Can I have one now? <laughs> you, can I have no. one now? Yeah. You, you, you know what? When I look at you, I think of chocolate because you're one hot <laughs> chocolate. Go <laughs> 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 Exodus 33, 7 to 11. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Really. It's my chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Too much information, sister. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's go yeah i'm ready okay so moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp far from the camp and called it the tabernacle of meeting notice and tabernacle it of meeting now i want you to remember that word guys the word tabernacle in the greek is skene skene s-k-e-n-e -E. if you read the greek version it says skene the tent tabernacle meaning the word skene is the word that means tent tabernacle temple mm -hmm. so moses erected a tabernacle uh, a tent a skene that's where god would come and meet moses now read tabernacle of meeting what that's why it's called tabernacle of meeting meeting, mm -hmm. meeting that god would meet moses there mm. keep reading and it came to pass that everyone who sought the lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting which was outside the camp so it was whenever moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. There goes the pillar of cloud that Solomon saw wow. when he built the temple. Exactly, yeah. So what would happen? Moses enters the tabernacle. The cloud yeah. would come down as a sign. Yeah. God has now come down yeah. to meet Moses in the tabernacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now watch what happens. Keep reading. And the Lord talked with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Did you catch when they would worship and bow down? When the... Cloud came down. Cloud yes. Came, yeah. 
Pay attention. When the cloud did not come down, they didn't bow to the tabernacle, did they? No, no, no they didn't. Yeah. So they're not bowing to a building, a structure no. of wood. No. They're no. bowing to the God who now lives in it. So God came down at that tabernacle, Skene temple, mm. and that's when they would bow down to worship because the God of Israel had now come down in a visible manner because they saw a pillar of cloud visibly. But now yeah. here's what's astonishing. Not only did the pillar of cloud come down, but inside the cloud was God appearing in visible shape. And yeah. Moses would enter the cloud and then see God's visible shape. Mm. Yeah. Wow. The Israelites did not see the visible shape of God. They saw the pillar of cloud, but God never showed them his visible shape, a shape that he would assume because God by nature is shapeless. But Moses did because he'd enter the cloud. That's why if you go to Numbers 12, let me give you a couple more to tie it in. Numbers 12, yeah. verses 5 to 8. Now, let me give you the context. Numbers 12, 5 to 8. Here, Miriam, now people don't know this. When I say people, most do. Some don't. There are three family members, Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. Miriam was the oldest child. Then her younger brother, Aaron, and Moses was the baby. Yeah. Okay. So Miriam was the oldest in the family. Aaron too, Moses is the baby. Now God chose the baby to be a leader of Israel and to be the leader of Miriam and Aaron. Yeah. Miriam didn't like it. So if you read Numbers 12, 1 to 4, let me give you the context. Miriam and Aaron were offended that Moses right. married an Ethiopian. He found a wife that was a Kushai, Kush, that's Ethiopian. Kush. So he married an Ethiopian woman. They didn't like that. And then they started complaining, hey, why should he be boss over us? We're leaders too. Yeah. And who instigated it? Miriam. So notice my brother Shino. From the first day of creation, all of man's problems were caused by women. Did you see that? <laughs> From Eve so in the garden woman. to Miriam. Miriam. <laughs> and then it says, Miriam even, she even instigated Aaron to rebel against Moses. Miriam instigated Aaron. Hey, Aaron, I'm yeah. the oldest. And we're leaders. Why should we listen to Moses, especially when he went married to Cushite? See? Yeah. We're just yeah. as, you know, yeah. we're equal to you, Moses. And then God says, oh, really? See, you women have been the cause of pain from day one. It's stuck for a lot of blood. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> the but, uh, so uh, It is, it is uh, the same Miriam which uh, saved um, uh, Moses' was, life. Yeah, Jesus' mother. You're right. Yes, you're right. Jesus. By the way, that's why in the Quran, Jesus' mother, Miriam, she's the sister of Harun, Aaron, and the daughter of Imran. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and according yes. to the Bible, the only Imran is Amram, whose mm -hmm. wife gave birth to Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. So here's Jesus' mother complaining against Jesus' uncle, Moses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it in yeah. But rather, what, what you said earlier, like uh, everything was a woman's fault. You know, that's uh, our right. Somali prophet. Somali prophet. Yeah, yeah, that's saying. what they say. Yeah. Yeah, That's why you Somalis are the wisest people on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now, no. now that Miriam complained, what does God do? Read now Numbers 12. Notice what God yeah. do, does to defend the honor of Moses. He comes down to yeah. defend Moses. Read 5 to 8. 5 to 8. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron. So where did Aaron. he come down to again, Naomi? The pillar of cloud, he came down. Yeah, stood Where to? Where did he come down to? The door of the tabernacle. So he stood the at the tabernacle door. again. So the yeah. tabernacle and the Greek word for tabernacle is skene, S-K-E-N-E. That's the place where God dwells and that's where you meet God. So mm. they saw the pillar of cloud come down to the tabernacle. They knew they were in trouble. Yeah. Because now notice what God says. This is scary. Imagine you're Miriam and Aaron. Yeah. And when you complain and then the cloud. Wow. Then a voice says, bring Miriam and Aaron before me. Dum, da, da, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> That's scary. Okay, That's scary. And they both went forward. Then he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face even plainly and not in dark sayings and he sees the form of the lord did you catch right? it yeah form of, form the, lord, of yeah. the lord see i love and honor moses to such an extent yeah. i don't just 
speak to him and dream a vision. I've actually come down from heaven, entered the world to meet him actually face to face, speak to him directly mouth to mouth without sending a creature to represent me. That's how much I love and honor Moses that I've come down from heaven itself yeah. to meet wow. with him on earth, to speak to him directly face to face, not sending a creature to speak to him. Wow. And I even give him the honor to let him see my visible shape, the shape that I assume in heaven, the shape yeah. that the angels see me with. Yeah. And you oh, yeah. dare complain against this man, this man that I've honored so much. So read eight again. Yeah, that's how it ends. I speak with him face to face, even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Yeah. See? How yeah. dare you slander a man that I have honored and loved so much that I have come down visibly yeah. out of heaven and I have entered the world visibly. Yeah. And I have come to see Moses and speak to him directly face to face. And I've given him the honor to see the very shape, the very visible form that I manifest with and appear in before the angels in heaven. That's mm. how much honor I've given this man. And you accuse him? Yeah. Mm. Oh, exactly. praise God. Praise God. I just want, there is a message here, DJ Somali person accusing us. Islamophobic. She and I are Islamophobic. He's called sure, yeah. uh, accusing us. Hatta Anna. He just uh, and even uh, even us don't try. Yeah. Do not try, <laughs> please. Islamophobia means we're afraid of Islam. Yeah. If we're afraid of Islam, we wouldn't be talking about Islam destroying Muhammad and Allah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Why we come out, we left Islam, we show in our face, we sit in front of you. Right. We are not hiding our names and how who, the way we look. You can see us. Mm. You after us, so we are because not. We are afraid very of you. scared of Islam. Oh man, I have phobia. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I have phobia. We don't have that. Yes, yeah. like beer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now you guys saw the yeah. point of the tabernacle. What's yes. the point of the tabernacle? The tabernacle is where God says, "I will situate my presence truly in a real manner." So have no doubt, I'm really in this tabernacle. I'm really in this temple. So yeah. if someone asks you, why did the Jews bow to the temple? Because God said, I live there. Yeah. I live there. Hallelujah. So I am there. You're not bowing to the building. You're bowing to me who lives in this house. Now, side point. What yeah. do you learn from the example of Moses? If you actually start Numbers 12, read verse 1 for us. I want to show you something. Verse 1. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Keep reading. Read. So they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the Did earth. Did you hear that? Now the yeah. man Moses was what? Very humble. Yeah, yeah, you are because you're a woman. You didn't like the fact that a man was supposed to be humble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not read that verse one more time because I want you to see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Now, oh, we God. believe these are the words of God, but whom did God inspire to write those words? Through Moses. So imagine you're Moses and God tells you, Moses, right. And yeah. now the man Moses is very humble, the most humble man in all the earth. Mm -hmm. Wow. And this is what you hear God says about you. Wow. Wow. Aww. Because according to tradition, the spirit inspired Moses to write this. So yeah. imagine Moses is being told, Moses, write these words. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as he's writing, the spirit's telling him, right. Now the man Moses was very humble. The most humble man in all the earth. Oh, yeah. And how that would just humble you before the Lord that this is what God thinks of you. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. You caught it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now notice in the example we have by Moses. Mm -hmm. Our Bible tells us do not repay evil with evil, insult for insult. Leave room yeah. for God to avenge you, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what Moses did. When Miriam and Aaron <clears throat> accused him, he didn't say anything. God came down to avenge him and defend yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. No. So what you're supposed to learn here is don't repay insult for insult, evil. If someone slanders you, 
someone insults you, don't be zealous to insult them in return. Let it go. Let God defend you and avenge you. Because they insulted Moses, slandered yeah. Moses. He said nothing. God Amen. came down to defend him. Yeah. yeah, our life is stream last night in Somali language because after the uh, and the brother uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, yeah, Jonathan, Jonathan, we had uh, another section Somali language, and that was what we were teaching. You know, exactly Amen. the verse you're talking about now. It is like a confirmation. You got it right. Holy Spirit, what you said yeah. yesterday, yeah. I didn't even listen. Last to it. night, you didn't. Uh, I was Somali. Even if you listen, you don't even understand. No, but sister, know, uh, I have the gift of interpretation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I interpret, you know, but anyway, do you get it, right? So then, not only yeah. learn that yeah. God lives in the temple, in the tabernacle, yeah. and he proved it by appearing visibly, and that God showed Moses the visible shape that he assumes yeah. in heaven before the angels. Is God by nature shapeless? You also learn what God said about Moses. So imagine Moses writing the words that God is saying, this is what I think of you, Moses. You're yeah. the most humble man in my sight, more humble than any man in the earth. Yeah, that's wow. beautiful. Isn't that moving? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's touching. Yeah, moving. Of course, touching. Yeah. yeah. That's how much. Now, someone keeps asking me a question why was Miriam punished? Because if you read Numbers 12, it says Miriam was punished, not Aaron. It's common sense and obvious, friend. Festival flowers. You're going to be uh, a, a thorn, uh, what do they call it? Uh, a thorn bush in a minute because. Mm. You're no flower, friend. No, but I'm kidding. The point, <laughs> the reason why Miriam is punished, common sense, she instigated the drama. That's right. That's yeah. right. She's yeah. the one who instigated. She's the one who inspired Aaron to accuse Moses. So God is punishing her because she thought she's the oldest. And as the oldest, she thought yeah. that she had the right to tell Aaron and Moses what to do. So the Lord humbled her because being the oldest child, she thought, she could then tell Aaron what to do and put Moses in his place. That's why God made an example out of her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The common sense, man. Why didn't he put yeah. because Aaron was being led astray by Miriam? After all, she is his oldest sister, she's the That's oldest right. child. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And see, because of that, God made an example out of her. I mean, come on, guys, just read the Bible a little more deeply. I mean, think about yeah. it. Why? Because she's the one who instigated. Yeah, she started it. Yeah. yeah, she began. Uh, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing is hidden from uh, yeah God who knows all. Yeah. So yeah. even yeah, even if they talked behind uh, the ba uh, the back of uh, uh, Moses, God, knows. God God knew already, yeah. and uh, he came to yeah. rescue him and uh, you know, fight for him. But he's yeah. wondering why not Aaron too, because the context yeah. shows if you go on the yeah. reason he singles out because she's the one who started the trouble. It's like yeah. I'm sitting one day. I'm minding my own business and I'm getting along with Moses. And then my sister comes, Hey, why does Moses get to tell us what to do? You know, yeah. hey, aren't we leaders too? Didn't God make me a leader and make you a leader? Yeah. Why should we put up with him? Especially he goes and runs off and marries an Ethiopian. What's wrong with all these Israelite women? See what you women do? Yeah. <laughs> you women. Oh my God. <laughs> you have a Somalian Christian who marries, let's say, an American woman. Hey, hey, what's wrong with Somalian women? Weren't there yeah. enough Somali women for you to marry, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you they do that. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> Somalis, they do yeah. this. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's yeah. what she did. She's an Israelite. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 So, Moses, what's wrong with the Israelite women? Look at yeah. your cousin over there. Look how gorgeous she was. She was <laughs> yes. Israelite woman? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> hmm? yeah. 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 What? You women have been the cause of human pain from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you women, you women. I guess. Oh, okay. Now, not yeah. forget the point. What was yeah. the point? Why did the Jews bow to the temple? Because yeah. God lived there, right? God yes. God's yeah. presence, yeah. yeah. Go to Matthew 23, 21. To show you from Jesus' own age. Amen. Yeah. 20, 23, 21. 20. He who swears by the temple swears by it and hit by him who dwells in it. So according to Jesus, the temple has an occupant. Someone lives in the temple, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because if you swear by the temple, you don't only swear by the temple. You swear by the temple and the one who lives there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So who lives there? God, right? God, of yeah. course, yeah. So it is to be expected 
that the Jews would face the temple and bow towards the temple because yeah. they know they're not bowing to a building mm. with, with bricks or stone. They're bowing to God who proved that he's there, yes. right? Yes. Okay. That's why they're bowing to the sure. temple. Mm -hmm. But my challenge to the Muslims is this. Why do you bow to the Kaaba? Do you, like the Jews and Christians believe, that in regards to the temple that Solomon built and the tabernacle that Moses built, that Allah lives in the Kaaba? No. 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 No, no Muslim believes Allah lives in the Kaaba. No. No Muslim believes That's Allah dwells awesome. there. So then mm -hmm. why are you bowing to that black cube structure? <laughs> Stone. Yeah. Why? Allah doesn't live there. You don't believe that. The Jews believe God was truly present in the temple, so they're bowing to God, not to the temple. But you guys are pagans and idolaters because you're facing a cube and bowing towards a cube when you admit your God doesn't live there. So then why do you bow towards it? Exactly. Yeah. Why yeah, do you bow towards it? Mm. Now, we're going to look at a couple more examples about the temple and its relationship to Christ. Mm -hmm. Go to Exodus 40 and read 34 to 38. So I hope this is edifying you and educating you guys, all of you. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah, brother, so. so good. Yeah. So this uh, is the difference. Yeah. God lives in the temple while still on the throne, but Allah doesn't live in the temple. No. I am not aware of any Muslim that thinks Allah lives in the temple because there are two types of Muslims when it comes to the presence of Allah. First read Exodus 40, 34, 38, and I'll comment on that. Okay. Exodus 30, 40, yeah. notice this is this is now the tabernacle being built. Yeah. Like Solomon's temple when he built it, the pillar of cloud showed up and filled the temple. Fire right. came out of the cloud, consumed the sacrifices. Notice what filled the tabernacle that Moses designed where God would then meet Moses. And the word tabernacle in Greek, don't forget, the word tabernacle tent in Greek is skene. S-K-E-N-E. Because you're going to see why I keep hammering that. Yeah. Exodus 40, 34 to 38. 40, 34, 38. Yes, good. Yeah. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because a cloud rested above it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever Just like the, yeah. the, the temple of Solomon, right? The cloud yes. filled it, and that was the glory of the Lord? Yeah. Finish and some of the priests had to then back away because they could not behold the glory? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Same thing. I'll keep reading all the way to 38. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. So they saw a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to lighten their path. Okay, so you see the connection between the tabernacle and Solomon's temple. Yes. God appeared visibly and filled it with his glory as a sign. I live here. Yeah. I dwell here. and This is where you meet me. That yeah. means up until the time of Jesus, when everyone went to the temple, they were actually going before God's presence and they were meeting God actually. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yes. How does this connect with Jesus? Well, I'm going to show you two connections. Now let's go to Luke. This one should really move you in your spirit. Some of these passages, when you read on your own, it really makes you like, it baffles your mind. It blows you away. <clears throat> Even though it's Luke 2, 49, I want to read 41 to 51. Luke 2, 41, 51, because Jesus at the age of 12, he's 12 years old. He goes with his parents, his adoptive father, Joseph and his biological mother Mary and their family to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Now watch what happens. Luke 2, 41 to 51 to pay attention to 49. His parents went to Jerusalem every year of the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished their days, as now, they before returned, you move on, pay yeah. attention to 12. He was 12, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, keep going. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. Now let me explain what that means, sister. 
Yeah. That means when they traveled, they u- traveled in a huge entourage. Yeah. It wasn't just few. It was many family members going yeah. up. So the crowd was so huge yeah. that they thought Jesus was in their midst only to find mm-hmm. out he wasn't there. That yeah. means it was a huge group. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So as they returned from Jerusalem, a day later, Mary yeah. doesn't discover until 24 hours later, Jesus yeah. is not here. And her motherly instincts kick in. Now notice, here is the woman who had an angel appear to her and telling her, you are the virgin mother of the Son of God, the mighty God in the flesh. And then she went to Elizabeth, who was barren, only to find out she was six months pregnant as miraculous confirmation from God. You did see an angel. You didn't hallucinate. You did conceive God in the flesh, have no doubt. Yet still, with all that, being a mother yeah her motherly instincts kicked in and as any good mother would do she panicked because she thought jesus was gone yeah so now notice it this moves me in my heart notice the mother yes. in her yeah. the mother of the son of god then rushes back to look for her beloved mm. when does she arrive wow. keep going so when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days, they found him in after the temple. After three days. Now wait. Yeah. Yeah. wait he was 12. They arrived and found him three days later on the mm. third day. Yeah. Where is he on the third day? In the temple. So Now notice the- how this is prefiguring Jesus' resurrection on the third day. Yes. Yeah. The Son of God yeah. arises in that temple which is his body on the third day wow the son of god is found in the temple on the third day let me repeat i'm going to make the connection the son of god rises in the temple that he dwelt in on the third day now you'll know what i mean when i show you the example notice yeah son of god was raised in that temple that he possessed on the third day. And here they find the Son of God in the temple on the third day. Yeah. Wow. I want to make the connection. You're going to see what yeah. I'm going to Go slow with me because you yeah. want meat, right? You don't want me to just give yeah. you like yeah. dessert. Yeah, you no. want steak, yes. you want potatoes. <laughs> you want sausage <laughs> pizza, even though the pig is haram. Haram alay. <laughs> yes. He's 12, right? Yeah. They find him in the temple. Three days later, on the third day. Now, notice what happened. I've lost my place. So, yeah. Um, Now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and, and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, So now, why, why are they amazed? Yeah. Before you go on, hold on, sister. Why were they amazed? It says they, he it's was teachers. asking questions. They're amazed because yeah. people don't know. You don't ask questions necessarily to learn. Sometimes yeah. I ask you questions in order to test you. Yeah. yeah. Because I can ask you a question to see if you know what you're talking about. So they were blown away, these religious scholars. Yeah. A 12-year-old is asking them tough questions that they're having yes. a hard time answering. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So then the mother finds Jesus in 48. What does she say to him? So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. Now, before you move on, sister, mm-hmm. notice the motherly instinct. She refers to Joseph as his father, even though mm-hmm. she knows he's not the biological father. He's the adoptive yeah. father. Yeah. 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 So why have you done this to us, son? Yeah. We have been anxiously looking for you because we thought we lost you. Yeah. Watch how Jesus lovingly, gently corrects and reminds her, mm. my father isn't looking for me because yeah. I'm in my father's house. Read 49. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Did you catch it? My yeah. father is not anxious. I'm here in my father's house doing my father's will. Yeah. Reminding yeah. her. Mary, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. though you are my mother and I'm your son, I'm also your Lord because I'm the son of God. That's right. My father isn't looking for me because I'm here with my father in his house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. See the power? 
Yeah. yeah. Wow. You see the words of our Lord? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you see the love of the mother? Mary yeah. forgets herself in the sense that her motherly instincts kick in. Mm -hmm. And instead of remembering, wait, this is the son of God. He doesn't need me to worry about him. He's the one preserving us. In fact, he can get home faster than we can because yeah. he can go from one place to the other in a nanosecond. You're but right. her motherly instincts took over. And as a good mother, she's worried about her son. Yeah. Yeah. See how much she loves him? Yeah. Yes. yes. Amen. Okay, when I think about it, it moves me. Her love for her son. And mm. she anxiously looks for him. And then Jesus is comforting her. Mm. Yes. Mary, Amen. you don't need to be anxious. Yes. My father is not anxious. He's not looking for me because I'm here with my father in his house because this is my true home. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Isn't it amazing, right? Yeah. yeah. It is yeah, it is. yeah. Okay. So now read all the way to 51 because I'm going to now tie it in with Jesus as being the temple. Okay. But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Now, so you read all the way to 52, didn't you, sister? 51. That's good. I just want to test you to see if you're at 52 as well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, it's okay. 52, but you got it, right? So yeah. Mary, notice, Mary pondered all these things in her heart. Mm. That means though she was told this is a son of God, the reality of this experience was still overwhelming and it took her a long time to process it. Yeah. Yeah. Now let me tell you why it took her a long time to process it. It was mercy on God's part for not allowing Mary and Joseph to fully comprehend who was living in their midst. Why? Because if they truly understood the extent of who yeah. Jesus is, it would be hard for them to function as his parents. Because if you, no, this is God in the flesh. How are you going to tell God what to do? Yeah. How are you going to tell God, get up, it's morning time? Exactly. How are you going to tell God, go wash your hands? Exactly. How are you going to tell God, go take out the garbage? How are you going to tell God, hey, go bring me that chair, right? Yeah, right. So it is mercy on the part of Jesus that though they're told who he is, they don't fully comprehend and it doesn't fully sink in so that they could live in his presence and function as his parents. And that's yeah. why it says he submitted himself to them. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So this shows yeah. the humbleness of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. He right. wasn't a time to say, hey, Mary, don't you know who I am? I'm your God. <laughs> Joseph, you don't tell me what to do. Shut your mouth. I can it. <laughs> to make it easier for them to yeah. function as his parents, yeah. he humbled himself and he subjected himself to them and didn't go around and neon lights advertising, I'm the son of God, your creator. You don't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do. Okay. You see? Now, yes. yeah. what's the significance with Jesus being 12 and in the house of God? 12. Jesus yeah. is 12. Yeah. 12 tribes of Israel. Israel is made up of 12 tribes. Yeah. It is not a coincidence that Luke records Jesus already knowing that he's the son of God. God is his father. And that he's sent to do the will of Father at 12 because he is perfect Israel. He is true mm -hmm. Israel. Yeah. Israel, just like Israel is made of 12 tribes, you have the 12-year-old Jesus, true Israel, already fully aware. He's the son of God, sent by God to do God's will. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Now, the other connection with Jesus, because this is all part of the Kaaba. Yeah. All part of the Kaaba argument. Jesus is found in the temple on the third day, right? Yes. Yeah. And I kept saying, Jesus was raised in his temple, which he possessed on the third day. Why do I keep saying that? Go to John 2, 19 to 22. Let me show you something that's going to blow your mind away. Okay. Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. So he's going to raise what in three days? The, the temple. temple. The temple. The temple. But what temple? Now keep reading. Then the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple. And will you raise it up in three days? 
but he was speaking of the temple of his body. Mm. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which, uh, which Jesus had said. Okay, so you, you see that Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then they thought he's talking about the Temple of Jerusalem, but then John said he's talking about his body. So you yeah. see that Jesus' physical body is the temple of God where God dwells in, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You notice on the third day, Jesus raised his physical body, which is the temple set, just like in Luke 2, they found Jesus on the third day in the temple, which is a shadow of Jesus Raising his physical body, which is his temple. So on the third day, Jesus was raised in his temple again. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. So oh, is yeah. Jesus' physical body the temple? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember the tabernacle of the temple? The cloud came down? Yeah. Go to Matthew 17, 5. Yeah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear so just him. like the cloud came down on the temple and the tabernacle, the cloud comes down on Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Do you know why? Because his physical body is the tabernacle, the temple mm -hmm. of God. And God lives in that physical body as his temple forever because the physical body of Christ is made eternal, immortal. It is the eternal temple of the true God. Amen. 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 Go to John 1.14. Yeah. John 1.14. 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, now, do you see that word, dwelt among us? Mm. Let me show you. The Greek word is eskinosin. Eskinosin, eskinosin comes from the word skinao. Skinao means to pitch your tent to tabernacle. Remember what I said, that the Greek word for temple and tabernacle is skine? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Here, the verb is... Eskinosin, skinao. Literally, it means, and the word became flesh and tabernacle pitched his temple, pitched his tent among us. Meaning, when Jesus took on the flesh body, that flesh body was the temple, the tent that wow. he took to himself to live in. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. getting it. Yeah. So let me connecting. Get you the link to show you so you guys don't think I'm making it up, that you don't think I'm on drugs. No, okay, here you go. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Here's the link. You can look at you don't need to read Greek. You can see right there. I'm gonna give you the link. You go look at that and you'll see the word. Okay. And the word was flesh became and dwelt. Eskinosin. Oh yeah. Eskinosin. You click on the word eskinosin. You go to Strong's Greek 4637. Strong's Greek 4637. Yeah. Here it is. Let me show you what the word is. Skinao. Here it is. I'm going to now show you. I'm going to read the lexicon. Skinao. It says, verb, skinao. Okay. Yeah. To have one's tent dwell. I dwell as in a tent. In camp. Have my tabernacle. This is the word that means to pitch your tent, to pitch your tabernacle, to yeah. dwell in a tent, in a tabernacle, in a temple. This is the word. Wow. That the Greek version of the Old Testament uses for the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, the temple. So what John is telling us is when Jesus took flesh, that physical body was the temple that now God lives in permanently. But who's the God who lives in that temple? That flesh body belongs to who? Jesus. Jesus Meaning yeah. Jesus is the God who now dwells in that physical body as his temple forever because he raised that temple and made it indestructible. Amen. 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 Wow. Now, why am I mentioning this? Because yeah. when Muslims say, when you bow to Jesus, are you worshiping the man part, divine part? No, it's neither part. I'm worshiping the person of Jesus Christ 
because that person is God and his physical body is his temple. Just yeah. like the Jews would bow to the temple because they're not bowing to the physical structure, but they know God is living in that physical structure. So they're bowing to the God in that physical structure. When yeah. I bow before the physical body and physical feet of Jesus, it's not the body, but the person that I'm bowing yeah. to yeah. who's yeah. made that yeah. flesh yeah. is temple because God is living in that physical body as his temple. Yes. That's why we bow to Jesus. Yeah, Hallelujah. exactly. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Praise God. Yeah. So what's the point? The point is, I want to know, why do Muslims, why do Muslims bow to the Kaaba? Why? Does Allah live there? No. 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 So you're bowing to a cube for no reason other than idolatry because it was the practice of the pagans yeah. to run around, run around the Kaaba and bow to the Kaaba yeah. because they did that to honor their gods and goddesses because their gods and goddesses were situated there. But you Muslims, you claim you're not pagans. So then yeah. why are you bowing to it when Allah doesn't live there? Exactly. Yeah. Because there are two positions in Islam. Two positions in Islam. Mm -hmm. There's the Salafi position that says Allah is above the throne. And he is only with us by his knowledge, meaning that Allah is not omnipresent in the sense that his presence is everywhere. Hmm. Allah is with you by his knowledge. He sees everything, but he himself is above the throne, which is above the seven heavens, which is above the seven earths. Now, the Ashari, the Maturidi, like Hamza Yusuf, believed that Allah, Allah is omnipresent, so that his presence is everywhere. Well, if his presence is ev everywhere, that means his presence is no more greater in the Kaaba than anywhere else. Exactly. Because if he's present everywhere, that means he's not just present in the Kaaba, he's present in my home, he's present everywhere, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you believe he's present everywhere, that means you still have no reason to bow to the Kaaba than to any other building because he's equally present in every place. So why not bow to every place if that's the reason? That's yeah. right, it's exactly. You can bow wherever you want. If that's you see the, the case. problem? Yeah. 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 So... Muslims, you are pagans, you are idolaters because of Muhammad, because you bow to a cube, a structure. Yeah. A cube, a structure that was erected by pagans for the worship of their gods and goddesses. Yeah. And you do so because of a false prophet and antichrist. And there is no good reason why you should do so. Mm. At least with the Jews, they believe God was there. Yeah. And with yeah. Jesus, when we bow to the man Jesus, it's not the physical body we're worshiping. But we're worshiping true. that person who That's is true. God, who made that physical body his temple. Yeah. yeah. So it's the person who is God that became flesh that I'm bowing to. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you guys are pagans and idolaters. That means five times a day, you Muslims are committing paganism, idolatry by facing a cube That's for right. no good reason. Exactly. Yeah. I'm bowing mm. down to it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Now, what about the black stone itself now that's the cube what about the black stone well mm. do me a favor naomi go to leviticus 26 verse 1. hold on a second. let me just rebuke this guy for uh dude leviticus. don't be a tool of the devil Which to one? send me a message in a live stream to disturb my oh, peace sorry, no. when mm. i'm in a live stream glorifying jesus thank you for your concern but your timing sucks anyway enjoy your day sorry about that anyway <laughs> No, someone's sending me a message saying that suppose I gave out my address in one of my YouTube sessions and the Muslims know it. Uh, because again, Satan wants to distract. But in Jesus' yeah. name, he's our shield. But go ahead. Now, Leviticus 26, verse 1. Read it for me. That's one. You shall not make idols for yourselves. Neither a carved image nor a sacred pillar shall you rear up for yourselves. Nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land to bow down to it. For I am the Lord your God. So the true God of Abraham and the true God of Moses says, don't have an engraved stone, carved images, stone images, right? A stone. Mm, yeah, yeah, stone. Yeah. So then how can Allah be the God of Abraham, Moses, when Muslims tell me that part of Hajj and Umrah, the pilgrimage, the greater and lesser pilgrimage, is yeah. that you must, if you can, kiss that black stone, touch it, and then smother it and weep, at, weep on it. Exactly. Where am I getting this from? Let me get let me read some hadiths because this is found in the hadith. Yeah. Now hold on one second. Where is that article? What did I do? Allah the snack bar. 
<laughs> I'm not a snack bar. I'm not a snack bar. You know, I like a lot at the snack bar. When I go to the snack bar, I have a lot. <laughs> I love the snack bar. Now, what does the Quran say about the pagans? And then we're going to look at hadith because these are hadith. Yeah. So we may be able to show them on screen. Maybe we'll do that. Let me see. But anyway, 39 verse 3, the Quran. Let, you read that for me, sister. Go read 39 okay. verse 3. 39 verse 3. Uh, Aubrey, okay. Belongs not sincere religion to God and those who take protectors apart from him. We only serve them that they may bring us nigh in nearness to God. Surely God shall judge between them touching that wherein they are at variance. Surely God guides not him who is a liar, unthankful. Now pay attention to why the pagans would worship idols, worship mm -hmm. stones. Their argument is, because we hope that through these acts, they will bring us closer to Allah. So we worship idols, we worship stones, we kiss stones and bow to them, because we're hoping Allah will see that, and this will bring us closer to him. Keep that in mind. Now, yeah. what did the pagans before Muhammad do? This is Sahih Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 59, Number 661. I gave you the link, but I have Naomi post at least this part, so you guys see it. If you just can post that part, it's a long one. I'll okay. read all of it, but watch what they used to do. Narir Abu Raja al Uta these names. Utaridi, Utaridi, al Utaridi. Okay. Oh, my lisp. All right. We used to worship stones. And when we found a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take the ladder. So you notice wow. it is a pagan practice yeah. done yeah. by the pagans before Muhammad was born and during the yeah. time of Muhammad to worship stones. And if they found the stone that was better, they would replace that other stone with the better one. Yeah. So here you have an admission by Muslim sources. Veneration of stones is a pagan practice. Yeah. So mm. read the rest of it. But yeah. if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some earth, soil, and then bring a sheep and milk that sheep over it and perform tawaf around it, circumamb circumambulation. So notice the uh, tawaf, tawaf is something the pagans would do, circumambulate, yeah. which is yeah. what Muslims yeah. do when they yes. run around the Kaaba seven times. Yeah, yeah. When the month of Rajab came, we used to stop the military actions, calling this month the iron remover. For he used to remove and throw away the iron parts of every spear and arrow in the month of Rajab. Abu Raja added, when the prophet sent with Allah's message, I was a boy working as a shepherd of my family camels. When we heard the news about the appearance of the prophet, we ran to the fire, i.e. to Musaynima al khadab Okay, so you have now confirmation from Muslim sources. Venerating stones, pagan practice. Running around stones or objects, Running around pagan practice. Yeah, yeah. Now, what does this have to do with the black stone? Well, let's read. Remember what the pagan said? We only venerate them to bring us closer to Allah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now let's read. This comes from Sunan Ibn Majah. Sunan Ibn Majah. Okay. Sunan Ibn Majah. No, uh, hadith number 2944. Great Hassan. Hassan. It's online too. It's all in those articles that I shared with you. Yeah. Saad bin Jubaidis reported to have said, I heard Ibn Abbas saying that Allah's messenger said, this stone, watch this, this black stone yeah. must come on the day of resurrection and will have two eyes to see with and a tongue to talk with, bearing witness for him who caressed it with oh, truth. Right. Wait, what did Muhammad say? Here, let me show you. I'll and post it so they can see it. Okay. Yeah. Watch this. There it goes. You should be able to. Did it all fit in? Yes. Yes. Guys, watch. This is what Muhammad said. Okay. This is what Muhammad said. I want you to see it with your own eyes so you know I'm not making it up. Yeah. Yeah. This okay. stone watch. must yeah. This stone must come on the day of resurrection, and it will have two eyes to see with and a tongue to talk with bearing witness for him who caressed it with truth, Islam. But did you catch it? That the pagan <laughs> said, we only venerate these stones, hoping it will bring us closer to Allah. What did Muhammad say? When you touch this stone with sincerity, caress it and honor it, 
This stone will come to life and defend you and intercede for you before Allah. Wow. Yeah. Convince me this is not different from paganism. Exactly. It is the same manner. Yeah. It's exactly. it's not, right? yeah. yeah. Okay, now, this is a lengthy citation. Lengthy, but I got to read it. It comes from Fiqh Sunnah. Fiqh Sunnah, right? Which, uh, again, there's an online version. Volume 5, Tawaf, or Circumambulation around Kaaba. Number 74B. This is translated by Sayyid uh, Sabik. Sabik. Ah, oh, these names. Sayyid Sabik. Can you say that five times fast? <laughs> right. No, I said five times fast. Say five times fast. Oh, okay. five times fast. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Okay, let me read this for you. Very lengthy, but bear with me. I hope I'm not putting you to sleep. Because I want you to see this has to do with the rites of pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. What must Muslims do when they perform Hajj or Umrah? Okay, here he wants to do. It is Sunnah to perform certain acts in uh, Tawaf as given below. Below, Tawaf, when you go to perform circumambulation. So what must yeah. you do? Facing the black stone at the start of Tawaf while uttering a takbir, Allahu Akbar, and mm -hmm. tahleel, la ilaha illallah, and raising one hand, one's hands as they ra are raised in prayers. And mm -hmm. if possible... Touching it with both hands, kissing it quietly. I love you, baby. <laughs> Placing one's cheeks on it. This is sunnah. So mm -hmm. if I can do, touch it, both hands, kiss yeah. it, and put your, oh, you are my baby, sweet cheeks. Oh. <laughs> the sweeter the juice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, one may touch it with one's hand and kiss the hand. So if you can't do that, just touch it and go. Yeah. I'm not like, this is sunnah, man. Yeah. Or touch, yeah. It, with something. touch yeah. it with something. So if you can't touch with your hand, if you have a stick, touch it with a stick and kiss the stick. Mm -hmm. And then kiss it. Or if even that is not possible, one may just point to it with a stick, etc., as is mentioned in some of the ahadith given below. Now watch. Wow. Ibn Omar said, Allah's messenger faced the black stone, touched it, then placed his lips on it and wept for a long time. So this is what Muhammad did. He would touch it and then go. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Here, let me show you the quote so you guys don't think I'm lying. Here, I'll give it to you. You can watch it right here. Here, post it so they can see it as I continue reading. Right there. Yeah. I'm going to continue reading. So you just let okay. him see it. Omar also wept for a long time. So even Omar would weep. <laughs> the prophet said, Oh, Omar, this is the place where one should shed tears. Reported by Al-Hakim, who considers it a sound hadith with a sound chain of authorities. Now, continuing. It's a long one, guys, so bear with me. Yeah. It is reported by Ibn Abbas that Omar bent down towards the black stone and said, By Allah, I know that you're a mere stone. I know you're just a stone. Yeah. If I had not seen my beloved prophet kissing you and touching you, I would have never done so. The Quran says, You have indeed in the Messenger of Allah a beautiful pattern of conduct. This was reported by Ahmed and others in slightly different words. So even Omar said, look, you're a stone. You can't save me. Yeah. But if I didn't see Muhammad do it, I wouldn't do it. Because he did it, I'm going to do it because I have to follow his example. Yeah. So they yeah. didn't even know why they were doing it. Mm -hmm. It gets worse. Nafi yeah. said, I have seen Ibn Omar touching the black stone with his hand, then kissing his hand and saying, ever since I saw the prophet doing this, I have never failed to do that. Reported by Bukhari Muslim. Uh, Sawaid bin Ghafla said, I have seen Omar kissing the black stone and touching it. He further said, I know that the Prophet was specially very particular about it. He was very fond of the black stone and doing it. Wow. Wow. Muslim. Sai Muslim. Ibn Omar reported that Allah's messenger used to come to Kaaba, touch the black stone and then say, Bismillah, Wallahu Akbar. <laughs> this is reported by Ahmed. Muslim has reported on the authority of Abu Tufail that he said, I have seen the Prophet making tawaf around the Kaaba, touching yeah. it with a stick, and then kissing the stick. Bukhari, yeah. Muslim, and Abu Dawood reported that Omar re approached the black stone and kissed it. This is Omar again. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I know that you are a mere stone yeah. that neither harm nor do any good. 
If I had not seen the Prophet kissing you, I would have never kissed you. Wow. Now watch this. al khatabi said, this shows that abiding by the son of by the Prophet, abide the son of the Prophet is binding. You got to do it. Yeah. Regardless of whether or not we understand its reason or the wisdom behind it. Just do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Blindly you follow. don't know why. Yeah. And it yeah. doesn't make sense. And yeah. you have no clue. And it mm. seems irrational. Do it because your prophet did it. And don't yeah. question. Don't question. Yeah. You guys catch it? Yes. yes. Yeah. Blind Mind following point. Muhammad to hell. Exactly. A few more paragraphs, I promise. Okay. Such information devolves obligation on all those whom it reaches, even if they may not fully comprehend its significance. You got to do it, even yeah. if you don't comprehend it. It is known, however, now look, notice this explanation. And this comes from a sound report, by the way. It is known, however, that kissing the black stone signifies respect for it, recognition of our obligation toward it, and using it as a means of seeking Allah's blessings. Indeed, Allah has preferred some stones over others, as he preferred some countries and cities, days and nights, and months over others. The underlying mm -hmm. spirit of all this is unquestioning submission to Allah. See, Allah is testing yeah. you. Will you just do it without questioning, blindly yeah. follow me? Then I'll bless you. But wait, didn't we read according to the Quran that the reason why the pagans would venerate their stones and idols was to bring them closer to Allah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But here it says, Allah has given the black stone to bring you closer to Allah and bring you blessings from Allah. It's confusing. So in other words, Islam picked up this pagan practice and now claims it's Tawheed. Yeah. Ahad! 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 <laughs> now watch this one. This one here. In some yeah. ahadith, and they're based on some of our sound, Sahih, which say that the black stone is Allah's right hand on earth. Boom! Yeah. You know why you kiss the black stone, Naomi? Why? Because that's Allah's right hand. Allah has Allah's hand. Oh, yeah. Allah's hand. Allah has materialized his hand on earth in the shape of a stone. Mm. The stone is actually Allah's right hand that he's now materialized in the shape of a stone. So when you kiss it, you're kissing Allah's right hand. When you touch it, you're touching Allah's right hand. And some ahadith, now this guy tries to explain it away, which yeah. say that the black stone is Allah's right hand on earth. We do find, however, a plausible, rational, and yeah. justification for the statement. Now he's trying to explain it. That black stone can't literally be Allah's hand. Yeah. So now they're going to try to explain. They're going to do what's called ta'wil. They're going to allegorize it. In other words, whosoever touches the black stone, he pledges allegiance to Allah. As it were... By giving his hand into the hand of Allah. So it's not literal, but when you touch it or kiss it, it's like you are shaking Allah's hand, putting your right hand in his right hand and taking yeah. a pledge. Yeah. Even yeah. if that's the meaning, that still makes the black stone a means of connecting you with Allah mm -hmm. and bringing you closer to Allah mm -hmm. and bringing Allah's blessings on you. Just as some followers do pledge their fealty to their kings and masters by kissing and shaking hands with them. Now watch this. We're mm -hmm. almost done with this section. al muhallib said, the hadith of Umar refutes the assertion of those who say that the black stone is Allah's right hand on earth wherewith he shakes the hands of his slaves. God forbid that we should ascribe any physical organs to Allah. See, this is why they don't want to accept it literally. There's no way Allah's right hand can become a material physical object. So it's got to be allegorical, even though that's not what Muhammad said. Uh, yeah. The commandment to kiss the black stone is meant to test and demonstrate palpably as to obeys and submits. It may be compared with the command to Iblis to bow to Adam. Notice what you just read. Yeah. Just like Allah told the angels, bow down to Adam, perform sujood. And Iblis said, I won't. In fact, as I'm about to read the last paragraph, open up chapter 18, verse 50 for me, sister. Chapter 18, verse 50 of the Quran, and I'll let you know what to read. Yeah. We, okay. now, I'm going to finish the last paragraph. But when you get to 1850, just pause and I'll tell you when to read. We okay. have no definite evidence, however, to believe that any of the stones used in the building of, of the Kaaba originally by Ibrahim Ismail is still in existence today, excepting the black stone. So the only stone that remains from the time of Abraham Ishmael is the black yeah. stone, and even that's a lie. Because there's no evidence Abraham Ishmael ever came to Mecca and built the black the Kaaba and put yeah. the black stone. 
because it came down from heaven and they placed it there because it was an object from heaven. That's a lie from the pit of hell. But mm. now notice what he said. Just like Allah tested Iblis. When Iblis, listen to Allah, when Allah told the angels, bow down to Adam, um. Allah's testing you Muslims. Will you kiss the black stone, weep on the black stone, touch the black stone as a sign of you swearing allegiance to Allah, putting your right hand in Allah's right hand, yeah. even though you don't understand the wisdom behind it, or are you going to be like Iblis, question the wisdom and not do it? Hmm. Yeah. Why is that important? Chapter 18, verse 50. And when we said to the angels, bow yourselves to Adam, so they bowed themselves, save Iblis. He was one of the jinn and committed ungodliness against his God's Lord's command. What, and do you take him and his seed to be your friends apart from me, and they an enemy to you? How evil is that exchange for the evildoers? Now, notice what you were told. Allah mm -hmm. commanded who? The angels, right? Yeah, the angels. To yeah. bow down. The word bow down, look at it. It's sujood, sajda. Sujood. Yeah. A mosque in Arabic is called masjid, the yeah. place where you perform sujood. sajda, yeah. Yeah. where you do sujood. Yeah. Sujood is the act of prostrating, which is an act of worship given only to Allah. This is why in Islam, you cannot prostrate, you cannot perform sajda, do sujood for anyone except Allah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But here's the problem. Allah commanded all the angels to perform sajda, to do sujood to, to Adam, Adam, the creature. <laughs> so, where? Yeah. So that's the first problem. Yeah. Why is Allah commanding angels to give this act of worship to a creature? Right. Something that Muslims cannot do except yeah. for Allah. That's number one. Now pay attention again. This command was given to who? Angels, right? Yeah. But it said all the angels performed Sajda, right? Yeah. 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 We did sujood. Yes. Except sujood. Iblis because Iblis is a jinn, right? Yeah. A jinn is a genie. Yeah. Now, why is Allah punishing Iblis for not obeying a command to perform sajda to Adam when that command was given only to the angels, not to the genies? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good question. Yeah. Yeah. It's like me saying, and in in, I'm in a classroom, I say, all the boys get up and head to the gym. And the girls sit behind. And I say, you know what? I'm punishing you girls. You're going to have to go go. <laughs> after school because you didn't listen to me. The girls are right. You said all the boys. Yeah, aren't you a boy too? Yeah. <laughs> right? So wow. stupid. Wow. It says Allah commanded the angels, all the angels obey. Iblis, then he's a genie, and then he punishes a genie for not obeying a command that wasn't <clears throat> given to genies. Wow. wow. Poor Iblis. <laughs> Group team. Exactly, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, That's let me funny. give you an analogy. You're in a classroom, and I yeah. specifically say, all the boys get up and head to the gym. Yeah. It's gym time. Yeah. yeah. There's several girls, and they stay behind. Hey, why are you, why are you here? Why did you... <laughs> You said all the boys. Yeah. So why are you here? Because you said all the boys. <laughs> yeah, I know. But we're not boys. So what? Do it anyway. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. So stupid. You know, you yeah, you see how very stupid, stupid this religion yeah. is, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So you see how stupid this religion is, right? Mm. And why Allah asking the question about to, uh, telling the angels to bow down? Yeah, to Adam, who's a human, you know, it's the same. It's the same reason why Allah has Muslims commit idolatry by demanding they kiss a black stone, weep on a black stone, and touch the black stone. The same logic. It's a test, sister. Yeah, it's yeah. A test. <laughs> oh, that was test. Oh. oh, I didn't know that. I don't. But you yeah. want to hear what's worse? And yeah. we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah. You know what's worse? Did you know that when the black stone came down, it was white? Yeah, oh yeah. Black. Let me read for you. This comes from Jami at Tirmidhi. Jami at Tirmidhi. It's Hassan, great at Hassan. Good. And this is all in those articles, guys. Please take my materials, upload them, translate yeah. them, yeah. make clips out of them. You know, yeah. <clears throat> do what you need. It's for you. Notice this. This is the book on Hajj. Book nine, the book on Hajj, Kitab al Hajj. 
chapter 49. What has been related about the virtues of the black stone, its corner, and the maqam? maqam. Ibn Abbas narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, the black stone descended from the paradise and was more white than milk. So it was mm. white. Yeah. And now notice why it turned black. It was blackened by the sins of the children of Adam. No. I don't think you got it. Yeah. Anytime a human being kissed it, the black, the white stone would then to absorb the sin, yeah. sin yeah. out the sin, and then yeah. take the sin. And because it would absorb the sin of the kisser, it yeah. became black from their sin. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Two things. Notice again, black is associated with something evil and dirty and sinful. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Number two. Notice a black stone is taking away your sin and saving you from your sin. Right, exactly. A stone. A Third stone. fact, this is the same black stone that will come alive on the day of resurrection where Allah will give it eyes and a tongue to speak and then it will defend you before Allah saying, Allah, this person used to kiss me, kiss touch me. me and weep on me. <laughs> I absorb its sin. You must forgive them and Allah will forgive you. Wow. Wow. In other words, the black stone is taking the role of Jesus because Jesus took your sins and intercedes for you. But in Islam, the black stone did it. Yeah. 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 There you go. Such a confused religion. Yeah. It's bad. Confused. Now we got a part five on the Quran. Next week, yeah. God will. But yes. there you go. Back, fact. That was really good. Was, yeah. yeah. Fact it up. Yeah. This. If wow. after the series, you learn the argument the and understand. Yeah. You got to wow, understand yes. the argument, yeah. understand what you read and hear, so you don't misunderstand, misrepresent, misinterpret. Yeah. You have now weapons that are irrefutable from the living God to destroy Islam and expose this joke, expose yeah. this yeah. religion, so Muslims get saved to know the only true God revealed in Jesus Christ and his only true word, the Holy Bible. God has given you weapons that are indestructible. Learn Amen. to use them for the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much, brother. This was amazing, amazing uh, teaching as usual. Yeah, I, I think uh, I I don't know if it's our, our brother Dir Dar if he's still here because yeah. he he wrote it in the beginning. If he can ask some questions, so right, if you want to, if you have a time, yeah, yeah. yeah if you are here, still questions. here, Dir Dar. I'm still the one, you're still the yeah. one. <laughs> I thought you forgot this week. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he yeah, go ahead. I'm here. I'm yeah, dear, okay, if yeah. you can ask the question or I anyone else, yes, please yeah. ask. Yeah, he's here. Yeah, yes. and tag us at Somali Christian TV and I'll read them out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And make sure if you guys can, put the links to the articles in your description box. Let me give you two more that goes with this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I gave them to all you. The, I think I sent them to you, right? You got them all? But let me give you two more. Yes, Thank please. You. So we can put on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because you did make it available because I want them to take the stuff. Because I promise you, honestly, mm -hmm. if you learn these arguments, the Lord yeah. Jesus will make you irrefutable. And it's not again, I'm not saying we're here to destroy arguments and win debates, but we have no choice. They bring up arguments and we need to destroy those arguments, leaving yeah. no excuse to reject Jesus, yeah. bring in the feet of Jesus. So they force us to destroy yes. arguments. And we need yes. to, yeah. for the glory of yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Exactly. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yep. I think the question he had was, is here. Yeah. Um, okay, at ahead. what age Jesus and his family went to Egypt? Did that last? Did uh, well, that means shortly after his birth, right? Shortly yeah. after his birth, meaning he would have been some, some time after he was two years old. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, some, some time after he was two years old. Yeah. How do I know that? Because if you read Matthew 12... And you read the age in which Herod killed Matthew 2, not 12, I'm sorry. Matthew 2, with the age in which Herod ordered children in Bethlehem to be killed, he said two and under because yeah. when the wise men had approached Herod. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they saw Jesus, Herod calculated that the time that it took for them to reach him and to find the Messiah, Jesus would have been around two years old. So he had children two and under killed. So Jesus would have gone to Egypt sometime around the age of two or a little past the age of two. That's yeah. a matter yes, of yes, reading yeah. verse eight yes. all the way down to 23. Yeah. 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 Anyone else has a question? Yeah. Uh, maybe this question. Was the stone white when Muhammad first kissed it? I suppose yes. Say it again. I can't hear you. 
Was the stone white when Muhammad first kissed it? No, no, no. It came down white, supposedly at the time of Abraham and Ishmael. And by the time it reached Muhammad, it was already black. How he could uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> kiss a black stone when he, he used to hate the, the color black? Yeah. Because why? Because he knew if he didn't smooch it and lick it, then his sins would stain his heart and make it black. So he said, you know what? Since That's it's me. already black, let me kiss it so it can become even more black from my dirty heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Right? right? Horrible, horrible. Wow. Yeah. Now, this is it. Listen, like I said, the yeah. most stupid, irrational, wicked, yeah. filthy, immoral religion that I have discovered is Islam. Now, yeah. some people tell me that Hinduism is just as wicked. I don't know much about Hinduism. So yeah. I can't. Yeah. Comment. But mm. to be honest with you, the real miracle is that people think this religion is a miracle. Yeah, exactly. Oof. When it's. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. thank it, it, God. It, it, we thank Jesus. We are not following that uh, book and the evil cult. We come away from Jesus that. Christ yeah, the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, not sure if anybody, anybody has any more questions. Yeah, no but more questions. Yeah, do, that's fine. Yeah, get them in quick. I'm here as long as you want. It's up to you guys. Yeah, yeah if anyone else has a question, please. Let yeah. us give uh, like maybe two, uh, two uh, seconds. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know, brother, if, if you said or someone else said, and uh, you know, when uh, Muslims perform uh, that uh, pilgrimage, you know, called Hajj, yeah. um, when they go back home, for example, Somali Muslims, when they go back home, they title Hajj, for example, Hajj Shino or Hajj. So, and yeah. Hajj came originally from Al Hajj, which is a uh, stone. Yeah. So they take the uh, they take the title of stone, of yeah. stone, yeah, stone like yeah, uh, so stone, you, stone, 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 right? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but us, um, uh, the contrary, yeah. That just means pilgrimage, doesn't it? Yeah, but in uh, yeah, the, the, the name itself, uh, pilgrimage. Because I thought, yeah. again, correct me if I'm wrong. You know more than me. The mm. word for stone would be. Uh, Hajar, Al Hajar, Al Aswad. Hajar. Okay. Where does Hajar come? The Hajar is a stone, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So the title, they, the title they're taking is Hajj, Al Hajj, Al Hajj. Oh, okay, I thought Hajj meant you perform Hajj. Yeah, you yeah, you perform Hajj, hajj of course, but the, the title you take is Hajj. All right, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, orig originated from, 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 yeah, from, from the stone. From the stone. Yeah. From the stone. Yeah. Yeah. As, 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 like, like us, when we become flow of Christ and, uh, you know, our uh, sin is being forgiven by believing Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. we yeah. believe we are Christians, Christ. Yeah. Yeah. We take the name of Christ. Yeah. Amen. So, yeah, that's so the, 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 the name difference. Of the stone that saves you, brother, because you're always exactly. stone. Exactly. Yes, the stone, stone, stone saves stone them. And they, 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 they take brother, the name of stop stone. Stop getting stone. You are yeah. Stop getting yeah. stone. No more marijuana. Stop with yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. they took that name still. Yeah, yeah. yeah someone was spamming. Yeah, in it's Fikadu yeah. said, "Brother Sam, is it right that jinns have had in, have intercourse with Muhammad?" Let me call Muhammad and ask. No, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there is no, there is no okay. narration I'm aware of. If there is, share it with me. That jinn had sex with Muhammad. No, 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 no. His shaitan even become Muslim. So Jamal Abdel Nasser is a Somali a Muslim man. He always comes here. He has so many questions. He's always saying, telling us, even in the beginning of the teaching, stop talking about. Islam talk about uh, only Christianity, but Jamal oh. Nasser, if you have questions, even the other night you came and you said you want to debate. Now is the time. If you have any question, yeah. just ask genuine him. question. Uh, uh, yeah, if yeah. you have a question of, of and you know it's ironic. Talk. Here's yeah. what's ironic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you tell us stop talking about Islam, and yet you have Muslim channels, all they do is talk about Christianity and bash yeah. Christianity. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, four girls, SC Dawa Sissies, uh the Dean Show, uh, all their programs. 90% of the programs is a bashing Christianity, the Bible, and Paul. Yeah. Because it's a bunch of hypocrites who are play victims. They want to bully you and insult your God and attack your Bible and mock you, but don't do that to their religion. Exactly. Bunch of, that's what they say. So weird, so weird. Yeah, and we're here to it. expose the, the deception of Islam. And also because of our country as well, it's almost, they call 100% Muslim. So if we're reaching out, we have to show them what they believe it is wrong you have yeah. to prove them yeah wrong and after that they will accept the god will so i don't think he has any question you do not put any question here so yeah. brother if you can conclude with prayer if you don't yeah yes. yeah that would yes be good. And always guys do pray for these ministries somali christian tv pray for shino shania naomi pray yeah. for their protection pray for their provision pray for the support 
Pray yeah. God to use them and reach more people. I'm talking to our brothers, sisters, who are prayer warriors who fast. We need your prayers. We need your yeah. fasting. Because yes. God has given you that gift to pray yeah. for the church. And God will use your prayers to do miracles in and through us and for us, for the glory yeah. of Jesus. And there are other ministries you need to support. Adam Seeker, Hussein yeah. Meshni, Rob Christian, yeah. Usama Dakdok. These are brothers who yeah. are starting. Uh, Chloe Waked, Jai yeah. Apologetics. There's so many yes. of them. Yeah. Prophet Google, Prophet Google, yes, Jai Apologetics, yeah. Chloe Waked, yeah. Adam Seeker, Rob Christian, yeah. Hussein yeah. Meshni, Usama yeah. Dakdok. There's so many. I want to name all of them because yeah. they are starting out. They are small now, but we want to pray God will then sanctify them and prosper them. So yeah. they explode and bring hundreds of thousands Amen. to hear the truth so they can fall more in love with Jesus Christ and escape these lies of Islam and other religions. And do pray hard for my miraculous protection because you guys know if Muslims had their way, they'd kill all of us. Pray yeah. the Lord Jesus protect my daughters, my angels. Pray Jesus yeah. will bring them to me. Pray Jesus will keep me healthy to keep getting healthier so yeah. that I can use my health to glorify the Lord, to be along, around as long as he wants. Pray that I truly love the Lord. And truly yeah. worship the Lord, not pay lip service, and pray that the Lord will also prosper me for his glory in Jesus' name. So with that said, Father, yeah. we thank you once again. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Son of God, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are the Father's heart who mm -hmm. became flesh, the virgin-born Son of Mary, the eternal companion of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Son of God, Lord Jesus. You are alive. You are almighty over our lives. Our lives are in your hands, yes. not in the hands of anyone else. You have determined when we will enter your presence and no one can make us leave this world a day sooner or a second sooner. You are God over life and death. And we entrust you with our lives and the lives of our loved ones. My daughters, I entrust to you, son of God, Lord Jesus. Wash us in your blood. Shield us by your blood. Save us from Satan by filling us with the Holy Spirit and cleansing us by the blood of your cross. The Lord Jesus' blood that shields us against the evil one. We love you, Holy Spirit. We trust in you, Holy Spirit. We depend on you, Holy Spirit. You are the gift of the Father and the Son sent to the church to transform the church, to teach the church, to correct the church, to empower the church, to live in perfect love and obedience to the Lord Jesus. You've been sent to save us from our lusts and our sins, from Satan, his temptations, and from his children. Holy Spirit, we entrust ourselves completely to you. Our lives belong to you. Our families, my daughters belong to you. Our ministries are yours, Holy Spirit. You don't need us. We need you. Mm -hmm. The work you begin on, begin on us, complete it for the glory of Jesus Christ. Give us the power to be men and women of integrity, to never shame Jesus, never disgrace Jesus, never betray Jesus, never deny Jesus, to love Jesus and live for Jesus and die for Jesus, your eternal companion. Because without you, we cannot do it, Holy Spirit. Bless Somali Christian TV. Bless Shino Shania. Bless Naomi. Grant them long life, mm -hmm. a productive, holy, spirit-filled life mm -hmm. to glorify Jesus Christ, to see millions of Muslims, not just yes. Somali Muslims, get saved and mm -hmm. fall in love with Jesus Christ and provide for the ministry, their mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. And also, Holy Spirit of the living God, Give them the desires of their hearts, yes. desires you have sanctified, yes. because these desires, if mm -hmm. washed by you, will be in line with the will of Jesus Christ. So give them the desires of their heart. Mm -hmm. If it's children, grant them children. If mm -hmm. it's healthy children, grant them that. If it's provision, grant them that. Whatever it is, Holy Spirit, grant them so they can do the work that you've called them to do, because without you, we are nothing. Yeah. But with yes. you, we can do everything, and we love you and we worship you. Thank you for hearing us for the sake of Jesus, whose name we invoke, whose authority we plead, whose blood we claim over our lives, over our ministries, over our families, over my daughters, over our prayers. Please, Holy Spirit, we love you, we worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Keep us in love with Jesus until he returns, and we pray, Maran Athe. Lord Jesus, come sooner than later. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you, you brother. So much, yeah, brother. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Anytime. yeah. And thank yeah. you, everyone. My yeah. God bless you all. Yeah. 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 And see you soon, all. Yeah. God see bless you. See you soon. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.